So today I am talking with Ang Harrod all the way down in Swansea, which uh, apparently today is a little breezy. Just a tad. Introduce yourself, please. Uh, I'm Ang Harrod. I'm a musician. Um, I'm a neurodiverse, chronically ill musician. Um, and I try to make songs about things that I haven't heard songs about before. That must be a bit tough sometimes. I, I don't know. I think it comes slightly naturally in that if I am feeling an emotion and I want a soundtrack to that emotion, if I know I can find it, I'll go listen to another artist's music, them talking about it. And if I can't find it, I'll be, well, I have to express this myself in some other way. And that turns into the music. That sounds like a great way of composing music. As, as a songwriter myself, you are always looking for that something different, you know, what gives mm. you that moment of inspiration. I'm talking you, to you today as you're going to be part of our Together Festival. Mm -hmm. And you've also recently been commissioned through um, Disability Arts Online and Together to create something new. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, so um, for this, I wanted to create a pop song that kind of did reflect some of my experience of being disabled and sort of mentally ill. I had actually composed the chorus, just the lyrics to the chorus in the past when I was in a kind of depressive episode, but I didn't really know what to do with it or how I wanted to kind of frame these emotions and being in a kind of more clear headed space um, and having like the opportunity to apply for the commission. I kind of came back to it and I was like, okay, I want to kind of reframe this. I want to articulate this as not only my problem, but sort of everyone else's problem. So it's kind of a song about, I need support. And if I had support, I could do all this other stuff, um, but still <laughs> as a kind of upbeat pop song. I, I get that. I mean, I, my question would be, how cathartic do you find that creation process? And then, then perhaps when you play it live, does it deliver a different experience or does it consolidate that kind of freedom that the creation gives you? Um, I think often once it's done, I have a great level of kind of catharsis and kind of like singing it back and performing it excellent. Um, the moment of creation is both kind of frustrating and cathartic because I'll get halfway through and I'll be like, this is going excellent. And part of me just wants to kind of revel in the fact that it's kind of done and I'll listen over and over to the bit that I've done and be like no I have to finish this emotion it has to be finished off so it's this kind of like push pull of creation where you actually like the finished product you know is going to feel so good so you just like focus on the bit that feels finished and so that's that's my struggle in the creative process. No no I, I think it's really important lots of our viewers are creatives and sometimes it can come across that oh these people produce these amazing pieces of work how do they do it and it's really good for other people to understand that it doesn't just happen you know is a real sometimes you have to have a real work ethic to create that mm -hmm. piece of work so continuing on the theme of like your your creation mm -hmm. what element comes first do you start with lyrics do you start with music or does it all you know how does it work for you oh i personally always start with lyrics like I have quite a lot of the lyrics down before I tend to push for a tune when I was um earlier in my songwriting like career and I wasn't as kind of confident or good I used to basically write lyrics to other songs so I would like steal other people's rhythms basically and write lyrics as if they were to someone else's tune and then I would put that lyric away for like a few weeks and come back to it until I'd kind of forgotten what I based it on. And then I could come up with a tune for it that was new and different. Um, and I think that has evolved into my current process, which is like always lyrics first. I, I mean, it's an absolutely valid process. So what instruments do you play? I play guitar and I play enough keyboard that I can put input on my MIDI keyboard and then edit around my mistakes. Um, but yeah, my primary instrument is my guitar. And obviously your voice. Yes, yes. How long have you been playing guitar and creating music from your spoken word? Um, I started learning guitar in, I think, year seven. I think it, um, very early in my school career, they were offering like discounted music lessons in schools, which um, I think is like quite a common thing, or at least it was. Um, and 
it used to be on a Tuesday and it should skip every every week so like in a week one week you'd miss period one and the next week you'd miss period two and that way it didn't interrupt your education and I got into the habit of skipping all of Tuesday and hanging out with my guitar teacher um and he didn't mind because I was a really I really cared about guitar and I was pretty good at it um and every week my teachers were like oh you had must be in guitar I love that so now you know as a adult as we are um mm -hmm. how much time are you able to dedicate to kind of that creative process um I think it kind of depends what's happening I think because my kind of workflow is very up and down um so I still kind of consider a lot of like half of creating feels like my free time but that's the half that feels nice like the kind of sitting down to grind I mentally I'm like this is my work hours um but yeah a few times a week I get like a session of doing something creative are you able to view yourself as a full-time artist or do you have to fit it in around other work um I view myself as a full-time freelancer and that includes my music work um but all the work I do is kind of freelance and is somewhat creative it's somewhat to do with like words or like creative people but that does translate into a lot of it not feeling as creative which I think is a very common experience yeah and I think that you know recent times have closed people down a lot um I thought Covid would be this massive creative window um, mm. and and it kind of hasn't been yeah you know, all that free time would just be oh wow I'm locked down I can't go anywhere and actually the lockdown in itself locks your mind down sometimes I mean yeah. did you have that experience at all yeah for sure I think it's currently I think and I think this is quite a common experience but for me I found it very difficult to start anything new like this creative work I've been able to do has been able to say okay well I have these fragments from before lockdown that I've kind of written down and put in a book somewhere and I can take those out and maybe work around with them but I found it very new to, sorry I found it very difficult to sit down and like write onto a blank page something completely new hoping you are able to look forward what are you planning for um well I have my another single which I've been working on and I really just need to sit down and do kind of the marketing the like lyric video like that kind of stuff for it and hopefully that will launch before the end of the year um and that's a single called I Got Better and it's about um like friendship breakups which is another like avenue where I was feeling a big emotion and I couldn't find any music that kind of reflected that and I think it's a very common experience to have big emotions around your friendships and like arguments within your friendships friendships breaking down but most of the songs that exist out there about relationship breakups are romantic relationship breakups and they're like explicitly about romantic relationships so I didn't have anywhere to kind of cathart so I ended up writing quite a few songs about friendship breakdowns um and this is one of them um that hopefully will come out before the beginning of 2022. I'd like to now say thank you so much for giving your time today um for this interview um, and to close, I'd like you to introduce your current single. Uh, this is uh, We Grew Up in the Graveyard. This is We Grew Up in the Graveyard. I would say it's about a lot of things. At the time when I first wrote the first kind of words, writing it down, it was based off of a Dylan Thomas quote, which is Swansea is the graveyard of ambition. And I wrote um, the first words when I was a very angsty teenager, very worried and like very ambitious, but like feeling destined to not be able to go anywhere um and looking back I feel like it yeah it could be all about a lot of things it's about kind of industrial neglect of not the southeast in London it's about feeling disenfranchised through being diagnosed as chronically ill which I like recently had been when I first wrote it it's about all those things about kind of desperation to succeed and like certainty that you are at a disadvantage for one reason or another and how you deal with that. Brilliant. Let's watch the video. Directed grasping death soil tight. We made our own electric light. Competition's bright and loud. Cause only the best get out. And every other flame goes out. 
Wanna get out, not go out Wanna get out, not go out We grew up in the graveyard We grew up in the graveyard We grew up in the graveyard I had a bloody dirty relationship Book microchip. Grab every, every town, milk, milk it hard. Fatten up that reptile. For M4 is your laboratory. Wanna get out, not go out. Wanna get out, not go out. We grew up in the graveyard. And leave us all alone where we were Drugged, depressed, being death soil tight 